What would you? What would Jesus do? Christian in Christian theology, the imitation of Christ is the practice of following the example of Jesus. So, what does that even mean? How does it apply to you and to your life, if it even does? That's what we will explore today. Welcome to the Sunday service. So that phrase, what would Jesus do? Do you remember? Do you remember the bracelets? It seems that they were ubiquitous, but that just could have been that a lot of people in my life were wearing them. But it became really popular in the early 90s. There was a novel uh, by Charles Sheldon called What Would Jesus Do? In His Steps. And it became very personal to a lot of Christians. And uh, I think it's certainly extremely catchy, WWJD. And why wouldn't people want to do that, particularly if you are a Christian, if you are a follower of Christian, if you were in a Christian youth group, I bet the vast majority of people in those circles wore this bracelet. And... I thought that they were all very dumb. <laughs> I thought that they were very dumb. I was a kid. I was a teenager and I just thought that they were kind of cheesy. I did not get it. And I'm sure, sure of it that I made fun of those kids that were doing it because I was a little jerk. Today, I'm an older, bigger jerk, but you get the idea. But I don't anymore. A lot has changed in my life, and you have a deeper understanding of yourself and the world over time. Hopefully, God willing, as we age, we grow and develop a deeper understanding of ourselves and our lives and what is important, and through life's experiences, ups, downs, and in-betweens, and all of it, the way that we view things changes. We have a deeper appreciation. Hopefully, I I have a deeper appreciation of the place and the role that values play in our lives. I have a deeper appreciation for the necessity of positive role models and none finer than Jesus Christ, the perfect man, perfect human being. When you study the life of Jesus and what he did and just all of it, it's extraordinary. And to be able to look and see, okay, do I know how this, this person lived? Do I know what they believed in? Do I know how they conducted themselves? Do I know how they put their, he put his values to work in his life? And I, I do, I have the opportunity to do that. So why wouldn't I emulate that? Why wouldn't I attempt to model that behavior knowing full well that it's never going to happen, that I am maybe not the farthest thing in the world from Jesus, but pretty far. It's just my very nature as, as, as fallen, as flawed, as somebody who, who is a sinner and will continue to sin. But we need to have examples, people that we can aspire to be, that we can work towards getting closer to their standard and their ideal of both the ways that we think, but more importantly, the ways that we live and the ways that we act and the way that we behave in the world. And that's really what this is all about. The world is littered and awash with educated derelicts, people that know so much but for whatever reason, don't put it to work in their lives. Either because they don't want to, they don't know how, or they they choose to not. There's just so many people and you know them. And maybe you are one or have been one. You know what is right, but you don't do it. Just such a vast chasm between what I know and what I actually do. It's this behavior gap shows up in every aspect of life. So, so much has changed. So much has changed. But the biggest thing that's changed for me, I think I figured out, is that I'm just going to start taking people's words for it. I'm going to start taking people's word for it. 
It's estimated that there have been around 10 billion people who have lived as Christians throughout history. Certainly, certainly quarrel with or quabble with, um, quabble with that number. Maybe it's way bigger, probably way bigger than that. But 8 billion people throughout the course of history have been Christians. That's a lot of people. Are they all wrong? Of course not. Are they all right? Of course not. But I'm going to take their word for it, that for millennia, people have been following Jesus's example and his teachings. So I've decided I'm going to take people's word for it. That there's so much value in following Christ. There's so much to be learned from the life of Jesus that my life would most certainly be better if I practiced what he preached and he believed. So that there were teenagers walking around with what would Jesus do bracelets. And I teased them and made fun of them, but they had it right all along. I don't know if a teenager is intellectually or emotionally in a place where they could really appreciate what that fully meant. But the people that were wearing it, a lot of them just took the word for it. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. This seems to make sense. In a lot of ways, that's that's what we're all doing. That's what I'm doing now. At this point in my life, this seems to make sense to me. There's so much to be gained. And again, I'm going to take the world of 10 billion people, the word of 10 billion people, that there must be something going on there. So when you think WWJD, or you hear or see something, uh, someone wear that, what does it mean? Well, it's really we're talking about values. And I'm mildly exhausted by too much talking about values, but I think I am just I'm refining it down, condensing it down, and just coming to a deeper understanding of what it really is. And what values are, they are the filters through which we take in the information that we process. They're the filters through which we process the information that we take in. Take it in, we make judgments about it. This is aligned with my system of values. Then I make a decision that, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this information and use it or, or act on it, or I'm not. I'm just gonna discard it. This is just noise to me. This is of no value to me. So Understanding that that is the framework through which all the information that I take in, I am assessing and then taking action on it or or doing nothing. What finer system of values than, that, than those of Christ? Has there ever been a finer one? Will there ever be a better one? Another? I, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. You know, we're talking about, what we're talking about are values like life, love, peace, truth, righteousness, sacrifice, gratitude, service. I'm not mad at any of those. Are you mad at those? Do you uh, do you have a quarrel with any of those? Life, love, peace, truth, righteousness, service, gratitude. No, I think that these are universally agreed upon values. That's not crazy, but any stretch of the imagination. But there's so much more than just wearing a bracelet. There's so much more than simply knowing something again. You've got to put it into practice. You've got to put it into action. Put it into action in every area of life. And this is true for everything that is of value, of substance, that is of importance. You know how important goal setting is? Do you know how important goal setting is? Verdict is in. It's super important. It might be one of the most important things that a human being can do is think about what you want, because that's what goal setting is, is you're thinking about what you want. And then you make plans for achieving that thing that you want, for bringing whatever your desired future is into your current reality. Then you make plans and you execute those plans, which I'm fond of talking about is a human superpower. So I've known the importance of goal setting for a really long time. I think since I was 10, it took me until about 35 years old to actually write down my goals. Superhuman of me. Do you know what percentage of Americans have written goals? We all know how important they are. Do you know? 2% of Americans have written goals. So there you go. 
What about being self-aware? This is of value. This is an important thing. The, the, what is the term that I'm searching for? The unexamined life is not worth living. I wrote a book about this called The Purpose Book, for goodness sakes. It's being self-aware. It's knowing myself, knowing the impact that I have on others. Do you know what percentage of Americans or people think that they are self-aware? What do you think? It's around 95% of people think that they're self-aware. So just about everybody. Do you know what percentage actually are self-aware? 10%, around 10%. So that's that behavior gap right there. Just classic behavior gap. Everybody thinks that they are something, but very few actually are. What about virtue signaling? What do you think about virtue signaling? What virtue signaling is, is posting something on social media that says, I'm for panda bears. It's posting a square, a picture of panda bears saying panda bears lives matter. Okay, cool. You know what's so great about virtue signaling is that the person who's doing it gets to feel morally superior, to feel like you're on the right side of history, doing the right thing. Do you know what percentage of people that engage in virtue signaling do anything beyond simply posting on social media or wearing a bracelet? Less than 20%. Is that surprising to you? Classic Pareto distribution of 80-20. 80% of people who do it, 20% actually do something about it. So again, I am not because I am this. I have done all of these things. I am imperfect. I am constantly making mistakes. I'm constantly screwing up, but I'm trying. I'm striving. I'm working to become better. So classic. So it takes more than awareness and it takes more than understanding. We must also put what we intellectually know and believe into action. Have to do something about it. To live as Christ did and to ask to act based on what Jesus would do, we need to practice it every day. We need to practice it every day. Do you want to get better at something? How do you get better at anything? You need to practice it. You need to decide that you want to do something and then do repeatedly the thing that you're interested in getting better at and miraculously, you will get better at every day. Jesus had really strong values. He valued many things um, and you could probably make a list of hundreds, but I'll give you a couple. Jesus valued life. He, he didn't take life he did not take the life of anyone. He preserved it. When people lost it, he restored it. So we value life. We must not kill. Jesus valued love and was motivated by it. He gave freely to others. He lived by love and died because of love. Jesus loved everyone. He loved his enemies. He loved his detractors. He loved everyone. He loved the poor. He loved the sick. He loved everyone. That's not easy. But we can remind ourselves of that. Jesus valued peace. It's the Prince of Peace. He brought peace to mankind. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that or not. Jesus valued truth. Jesus was truth. He valued knowledge. He pursued the knowledge. So... Jesus valued relationships. He valued his relationship with God, with everybody. And what God desires most is to have a relationship with, 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 with you. We have an opportunity to have a relationship with, with God and with our creator. Jesus valued faith. He knew that trust is what sustains a relationship. Jesus valued prayer. He spent a lot of time praying thinking about things. You could look at prayer as just as, as meditation or mindfulness. He valued souls. 
Jesus prayed for everyone's soul, the people that he loved and the people that despised him. Jesus valued righteousness. He lived it. He modeled it. He characterized or lived in obedience to God. Jesus valued service. He was a humble person. He served others. Jesus valued sacrifice, obviously. He sacrificed everything. Obviously, he paid the ultimate sacrifice. He died for our sins. Finally, Jesus valued gratitude. He highlighted the need for giving thanks. He taught us to give thanks and to praise and to worship, to give glory to God. So, some of those are really, really, really hard. Some of them are easy, but really, really hard. All of them, all of them sound, that's not true. Some of them sound really easy, but do really hard. Some of them sound really, really, really hard and will be really hard to do. But if we keep them top of mind. We remind ourselves the life and the teachings of Jesus. We keep those top of mind. And then we apply them and use them to filter in all the information that's coming away all the time and to make better decisions and to take better actions. That's what it's all about. So at the end of each day, I advocate, I encourage you to ask yourself, what went well today? What are some examples that where I was able to live the values of Christ? Next, what didn't go so well? What didn't go so well today? Where did I fail to live up to the values? And that's probably going to be a way longer list, which is okay. And then finally, what can I do differently tomorrow? So it's a combination of being self-aware. It's a combination of learning to live through values. And it's a combination of, of putting to work the values and the beliefs of the ultimate human being, son of God. So what went well today? What didn't go so well? What can I do differently tomorrow? And we try again. That's what it's all about. None of it's perfect. You're going to screw up. You're going to make mistakes. That's a feature, not a bug. You'll get better at it. You will, you will lead a happier and more rich life. I just guarantee it. It's all worth a shot. Maybe you'll be like me. Maybe you're going to take somebody else's word for it. It's just really hard to do. It's really hard. We all know that we're supposed to take advice, to take feedback. Oh, man, I need to touch that hot stove a lot of the time. But I'm trying. I am trying to take the word of 10 billion plus human beings who have been followers of Christ and to try to put that wisdom and those teachings and those values to work in my life. I think it's going to go great. I'm going to do my best. As always, I encourage you to do your part by doing your best.